Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on fractions and decimals. We're going to start off with some key concepts, some key vocabulary today, and the first thing is that of repeating decimal. Now, a repeating decimal is a decimal whose digits repeat in groups of one or more without end. Now examples of this would be like 0 0.181818188 1, 8, 1, 8, where that 18 is repeating. And you could also have 0 0.8333333 where that 3 is repeating. Just two examples of a repeating decimal. Next, a terminating decimal is a repeating decimal which has a repeating digit of zero. And now lastly, bar notation in repeating decimals the line or bar placed over the digits that repeat. Now if we were looking for an example of this, if we look up to the 0 0.181818, we could write that as 0 0.18 with the bar over the 1 and the 8, or the line. Now let's continue on. Now we have two methods for writing fractions as decimals. One method is just using paper and pencil and using long division. So for 3 fifths, we would put the 3 on the inside of the division problem, 3.000, and divide it by 5, so that then our decimal point comes up here. 5 goes into the 30 six times. Subtract 30 and you get 0. So 3 fifths is equal to, well, 0 0.6, which is the same thing as 6 tenths. The other method that we use in our textbook is to use a calculator. And so you could literally, with the calculator, enter 1 divided by 16, and then hit your equal key. And when you do so, you would get 0 point zero six two five which is six hundred twenty five ten thousandths. Now in our second example of writing each fraction as a decimal and use a bar to show a repeating decimal, we're going to have something that's repeating here. So if we show it with long division with our six divided by the eleven Put a decimal point and a handful of zeros here. Now, 11 doesn't go into 6, but it goes into 60 about 5 times. Subtract 55, you end up with 5. Bring down your 0. 11 goes into 50 about 4 times. 4 times 11 is 44. And then we have that. 6. Bring down the 0 and it's 60. Now, you could right now recognize that, hey, look, I have 60 here and 60 here. So when I actually go, okay, what, how many times does 11 go into 60? That's going to be 5. And 5 times 11 is 55. And you get the 5 with the 0 again, and wait a minute, 
if you didn't recognize it with the 60, now you could recognize it with the 50 that, hey, I have something repeating here. But just to keep going one more time here, we have the 4. 4 times 11 is 44. And now hopefully by now you'll be able to see that, wait a minute, I've got something repeating here. So to write our final answer, since the 5, 4 is repeating, this is going to be 0 0.5. 4 with the bar over the 5 and the 4. This is not going to be 0 0.5454 with the bar over the whole thing. That is not our answer, just to be clear. And we can use the same process to solve negative 4 33rds. We'll just save the negative for the end. So we'll put the 4 on the inside of our division problem with a bunch of decimals. And we'll divide by 33. Now, 33 doesn't go into 4, but it goes into 40 once. We'll subtract the 33 away as 1 times 33 is 33, and we get 7. Bring down near 0, and 33 goes into 70 twice. 2 times 33 is 66. We end up with a 4 and you bring down your zero. Now, the more you solve of these, you'll quickly be able to recognize, wait a minute, I'm looking to get my 33 into 40. I already did that up here, so I'm going to have some repeating. Now, if you, again, didn't recognize that right away, what you would see is 33 times 1 gets you 33. You subtract and you get the 7 and you bring down your zero. And again, if you didn't recognize it with the 40, hopefully you're recognizing it now with the 70 that, wait a minute, I've already done this. 33 goes into 70 two times, minus 66, and you get 4 with that 0 you're bringing down again. And again, at this point you should recognize that this is repeating, and so our answer is going to be a negative, don't forget that negative in the question, 0.12 with the bar over the 1 and the 2. Now it can be very helpful to learn these fraction decimal equivalents. To learn that 1 half is equal to 5 tenths, 1 third is 0 0.3 repeating, 1 fourth is 25 hundredths, and so on. Um, if you can learn these and memorize these, you'll be in a pretty good place. In example 3, Camille's soccer team won 32 out of 44 games to make it to the championships. To the nearest thousandth, find the team's rate of winning. Well, what you're going to do here is to take the 32 and divide it by 44. Now, since we're looking for the nearest thousandth, tens, hundreds, thousandths, we need to go out to at least the ten thousandths so we know whether we need to round. Now let's solve this. 44 does not go into the 3 or the 2, or, well, 32. So 44 goes into 320 7 times. 7 times 44 is 308. And as you subtract, you end up with 12. Bring down your 0. And then 44 goes into 120 two times. You get 88. 120 minus 88 is 32. Bring down another 0. And 44 goes into 320. Huh, looks like we've had this already seven times. Subtract the 308, we end up with 12, the 0, and at this point you should know that this is going to be a 2. Won't even worry about subtracting now because now I have 0 0.7272. And if I'm looking to round to the nearest thousandth, this 7 is in my thousandths place. I look over to the ten thousandths. And that 2 is not going to round the 7 up. Remember, 5 and above, you round that up. 
And so our final answer here, 0 0.727. 727 thousandths. Now, in case anyone asks you to take that into a percentage, not that this question is, it would be, if you move the decimal place over, one, two times, 72.7%. Again, question's not asking for it, but you could calculate it. In example four, we're going to compare fractions and decimals. So in 4a, we have 13 twentieths with 7 tenths. There's a couple different ways to go about doing this. There's a method that involves converting everything into fractions. There's a method that involves converting everything into decimals. Either way works. Either way works. It's just what you're more comfortable with. So if we look at a, 13 twentieths and 7 tenths. Now if we did the fraction method, this would be 13 twentieths. And 0.7, like I said, was 7 tenths. Now, with the fraction way, you do need to find common denominators. So the common denominator for 20 and 10 is going to be 20. Well, 13 twentieths is already there. And if I multiply the 10 by 2, I can get to 20. And so 7 times 2 is going to get mm -hmm. 14. And so 13 twentieths is less than 14 twentieths, so 13 twentieths is less than 7 tenths. And that method works. There's also our decimal method. Let's take our 13 twentieths and divide. Now there's not much suspense here because we already know what the answer is going to be. But 20 doesn't go into 13 and it goes into 136 times. Subtract away 120. 20 goes into 105 times. And we get the 100 and 0. And so, as we look at these, I'll come back up to the top. 0 0.65 is equivalent to the 13 twentieths. And when we compare that to 0 0.7, it can be helpful to have the same number of decimal points. And so if we bring in this 0 into the hundredths place, we're then comparing 65 hundredths to 70 hundredths. Well, 65 hundredths is less than 70 hundredths, and so 13 twentieths is less than 7 tenths. Let's move on to B. Negative 11 fifteenths compared to negative 75 hundredths. I'm going to go strictly with the decimal method for this part. If we put our 11 on the inside, and our 15 on the outside, 15 does not go into 11, but it goes into 110 seven times. 7 times 15, 105. Subtract to get the 5. Bring down a 0. 15 goes into 50 three times. Subtract away a 45, and you get a 5, and you get a 0, and wait a minute, we're already repeating. Now what does that mean? Well, we're going to keep ending up with 3's here. And so when we look to compare our negative 0, 0.73 with that repeating compared to negative 0 0.75. Now, just as a point of reference, the closer you are to 0 on the negative side, the bigger your number is. The closer you are to 0, the bigger your number is. And so if we looked at a number line with 0, 1 and negative 1. On the positive side, it's the further you're away from 0. And so, you know, negative or 0.75 would be here, 0.73 would be there. Well, over on the negative side, 
negative 0.75 is over here, negative 0.73 repeating is over there. And so which one is bigger? I would say this one here, the negative 0.73. So negative 0.73 repeating is going to be greater than negative 0.75. So negative 11 fifteenths is greater than negative 75 hundredths. Jeremy got a score of 16 twentieths on his first quiz and 20 twenty fifths on his second quiz. Which quiz has the higher score? Well, if we look, we could divide into decimals or on certain questions you may be able to recognize that if your denominator can easily get into a fraction with 100, then we can compare. And this is one such fraction because if I multiplied 20 by 5, I get 100. So if I multiply 16 by 5, this total is 80. And likewise, 25 times 4 was 100, so 20 times 4 is 80. Well, which quiz has the higher score? It's almost a trick question because they're actually equal to each other. So both quizzes have the same score. And that is it for this lesson on fractions and decimals. Welcome to Chapter 3. Good luck.